Glazer. Jay Glazer joins us, the ultimate insider in the National Football League. But he has a brand new podcast called Unbreakable with Jay Glazer. It's a mental health podcast. It's brought to you by iHeart Media and Fox Sports Radio. Jay, thanks so much for taking time. We got about we got less than a week till the NFL season kicks off. Um, I could plug you for information, but this podcast seems to be far more important, right? It just is. Um, why? Why for you? I mean, you have you have a lot yeah. on your plate. There's a lot of things you do. Why do a podcast in addition to it? You know, I, I think I found my why with this. You know, for years, like I've suffered, I've talked to you about this, I've suffered from depression and anxiety from my earliest childhood memory. And my, I call that the gray, my depression and anxiety, my ADD together, that motivated me to do all these, these big things that I've had in my life. But the whole time, like people used to joke around, oh, Glazer's crazy, but they didn't know the kind of pain I was in. So... <clears throat> I kind of think I found my why. Like, for all these years, I felt like I was just cursed. And now I feel like maybe God blessed me with depression and anxiety because I can help everybody through theirs and give a word. You know, we we talk about mental health so much nowadays, but who describes it? So, you know, again, I think mean, God gave me the ability to, to to be very communicative and, and really be descriptive about things. And I want to use this to be able to, to describe it for people so they can have their conversations with, their husbands and wives and kids and grandkids and, you know, whoever it is and their parents. But I want us to be able to have the words to, to have these conversations because they're important. And the world's a scary place these days. I, so I agree like with you. I, 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 I agree. I, here, here, I have an honest question for you. Okay. So I have, yeah. Yeah. I have, I have somebody I know, um, um, somebody I know I, I just learned in the last couple of weeks, they're having a, a mental health crisis, right? And yep. Yep. Um, they're a teenager, and, uh, you know, anytime I've been around them, I don't notice anything. I literally don't notice anything. And it took one of their friends to tell their parents so that you figured out, like, something was going on. Like, I, no one had any idea. And it wasn't to the point of uh, trying something, but, you know, it was in the, like, those kind of stages of it wasn't good and it wasn't get, getting good. How right. do you, like, you're a parent, for example. How do you yep. have these deep conversations with a high school kid, for example, who isn't normally going to open up about these things? And, and that's why I'm doing this. Exactly why I'm doing this. Because I do think we're in the majority these days of those of us who are going through things. And you don't have to be at my level of clinical depression, anxiety. And that's, you know, my suffering makes me, I guess, qualified to talk about it, not my schooling. Oh, you know, social media, man, makes us think all our lives suck, right? We compare ourselves to everybody else's filter fraction of a second, not even a second of one day. And we're going, why am I so left out? Why does my meal not look like that? How come I don't have that job? Or on Twitter where people just talk so nasty to each other. So it, it's for everybody. And you're asking about, you know, these conversations. Again, I'm not a therapist. I'm just a dude who's messed up, who's learning how to be good with his messed upness. And usually I use a, a different word for messed up. Um, and if I could have these conversations and start making us feel like we're not in the minority, you know, that'll take away the sham. We won't be ashamed to talk about it. And there is, hey, listen, I have an anxiety attack every single time I've been on TV from 2005 till now. The very first segment, which is weird. Like, I'm not afraid I'm be on TV. I love it. But I have these horrible panic attacks. And until I wrote... The book, I hid it from everybody, including Strahan, who's my best friend. And they all, actually, the whole crew at Fox and Bell Sunday were like, why haven't you told us this? And I said, because it's your show, too. I don't want to take away from that. But now I text Kurt and Howie, uh-oh, it's happening. I'm struggling, which I didn't do for years. And now, because I talk about it so openly, I have a much better support system when I am struggling. And, and unfortunately, the days I struggle, it's, you know, it's, it's more days than not during the week. And, and I didn't ask for this. I didn't sign up for this. But I could use it to help others. Do you, do you have it in any other part of your life? Um, it ha so it just comes and goes. Like this morning I woke up. Whenever something good is about to happen to me, I feel the sky is going to fall. So we made the announcement yesterday. And just, man, it's just my mental health issues tells me, nope, this podcast isn't going to happen. Everybody hates you. The world's against you, which doesn't make any sense. It's not true. I know it's not true. But that's really what I feel when I wake up in the morning. And, you know, people go, man, you know, you're supposed to be this, this tough guy. You're talking about this. I'm like, yeah. 
that's what makes me tough. And because I have been in the world of football and fighting and ballers, like the center of dudeism, no one's questioning my manhood. So I can get out there and cry to you right now um, about my pain and my suffering, and no one's going to question me about it. So that's what I was saying. I'm, I, I want to be that, to be a voice to help out so many others where they can start having this conversation because the, the worst thing for us to do is for me to sit in my bed and not call anybody and not open up to people. And then to realize also, like, man, every time I've talked to someone about it, somebody has said to me either, oh, my God, me too, or it has gotten me closer with every one of my friends. Like, every time I've turned to a friend and said, man, I'm struggling today. Um, I'm getting choked up right now talking about it. <laughs> every single time. I've had friends who've just said, man, it's it just, it just gotten us so much closer together, our relationships. And, you know, I get choked up about it because I could have had that help for, I'm 52 now. I talked about it more. I could have had the help for 50, 15 years. And I just hit it. And I feel bad for this guy who hit it for all those years. So now with this, I'm trying to make sure we don't hide it anymore. But why do you think others hide it? Is there, is there still, I guess, like, maybe this is a loaded yeah, question. Saying, is it still you're taboo? You're like, you, exactly what I was just saying. People go, oh, you're supposed to be the big tough guy. Like, we put on this front. You're like ashamed. Like, listen, Michael Strahan's my best friend. 30 years. I didn't tell him I was having an attack until last year. And he was like, why don't you, why haven't you never told me? And I was like, I don't make up the rules of this thing, dude. Like, I don't know. But I said, for whatever reason, I felt ashamed with you. Probably because he and I are so competitive. And he's like, man, I could have been there for you. I could have come over. I could have talked to you about it. And that's the whole point. Like, I want to help lead the charge to show us all. When you start talking about this and lifting each other up, and my goal is to make us feel like we're in the majority, not the minority. And with this podcast, it's I want to be having people on from all walks of life to figure out how they deal with it, whether it's a head coach like Sean McVay this week who's, who started off. And the reason why I'm starting with Sean is because in the book that I wrote, Andrew Whitworth and I were trying to explain depression and anxiety to McVay. And he didn't really get it at that point. And then when we explained it, he was like, oh, that's what that is. And he really started to get it. And he went through some things last year. And he was more vulnerable last year as a result of understanding this. So that's why he's the first guest. But there's going to be, you know, again, I'm not a therapist or a doctor, but there's going to be people in that field. There'll be other celebrities telling, telling us how they deal with it. There'll be people who've just gone through the gray, um, people who've attempted suicide and come through it, people who've really, it, I, I want ways through the blue. I want to learn from others. I want to help communicate to others how we can all get to the blue. Jay Glazer. It's called Unbreakable with Jay Glazer. It's a mental health podcast. You can find it where you're listening to podcasts. The iHeartRadio app is a, is a great way. Wherever you download podcasts, his first guest is Sean McVay this week. Jay, I thank you so much, not just for your time, but what, what you're doing with this. This is really important stuff. Appreciate you being yeah, our I, guest. I appreciate you giving me the forum for this, man. And again, like just now, I didn't mean to get choked up. I don't know. Like this thing just kind of has its, its mind of its own, but, but it's so cool. I don't have to hide it anymore. I could stand on national radio and, and not care about the shame. There is no shame. Thanks, Jay.